Hi everyone and welcome back to Tales from the Red Dragon Inn. When we last met we were saving a market from some invading sea creatures and we have ventured off to see where they came from and what they're up to. We're going to be playing Scenario 4 here, That Sinking Feeling. I'm going to be playing it true solo again to show off the last character that we still need to see, Gurky, the backstabbing rogue kind of guy. And we have Otto the robot with us again, but it's Otto the Swindlebot this time. He was a blast bot last time we saw him. Two rogues, what could go wrong? As always, I recommend you turn on the Klingon subtitles. If I've made any mistakes, they'll be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. And if you would like to help support the channel, you can do that on Patreon or Ko-fi. You get to see videos early, for on videos, but mainly keep them happening. Thank you very much if you can. Without any further ado, though, let's go to story time with Rach as she tells us just what is going on here. That sinking feeling. You hurtle down the Undercity subterranean tunnels, pursuing the giant crab man who seems to be the leader of this underground assault against Greyport. True to his word, Gurky takes you on the most direct path from the Grey Market's massive cavern to the place in the Undercity that stands beneath the Great Temple. As you travel, it becomes clear that you heard the crab man's threat correctly, for the closer you get to your goal, the more signs you see of the sea creature's infestation. Brackish pools of salt water have settled in low places in cavern and hallway. Bright tracks of phosphorescent slime, no doubt left behind by the great oceanic oozes, stretch out into the distance and light your way, and the air grows thick with heat and a sour, acidic smell. It's just up ahead, says Gurky, a touch breathless. He vaults over a puddle of slime that shimmers and bubbles on a patch of the bedrock floor and leads you through an opening into a massive chamber beyond. By the goddess, shouts Deirdre, raising her holy symbol in a warding gesture. The chamber is the largest one you have yet seen in the Undercity, brightly lit by long-duration light spells impregnated into its walls, and by the glowing, fluid bodies of the oozes that slip and slither around the room. Holding up the ceiling of the chamber are four pillars of cyclopean size and construction, clearly wrought by dwarven hands. Each pillar bears the symbols and carved scriptures of one of Greyport's gods. This is it, shouts Gurky, pointing up. The temple is right above us. Behold the power of the sea, drylanders, booms a voice. In the distance, surrounded by a protective cordon of slime, the giant crabman regards you with a contemptuous grimace. This is but the first wave of many as the ocean rises against you, and its power is great enough to wash even your gods away. The waves that follow... Oh, wow! says Deirdre, looking up at the four huge pillars with a look of rapturous awe on her face. These pillars are engraved with all the scriptures to the four great divinities of Greyport. I didn't even know this was down here. Thank you, Gurky. This is truly a wondrous... The giant crab man sputters. Are you drylanders even listening to me? Eve rolls her eyes. Look, you have to understand. We've heard megalomaniacal speeches before, so we get it. The giant crab man clacks one of his claws in irritation. Do you not see the terrors that will soon afflict you? The seas will batter your dry and dusty city in a storm unending, until you and all your horrid works are washed clean from the surface of the land. Hmm, nice imagery, sniffs Eve, but not very original. I'll award you a five and a half out of ten. The giant crab man blinks at your party in disbelief. I'm going to enjoy destroying you. At that, the creature raises its smaller claw and the large conch shell that it grips between its pincers to its mouth. It blows a note that echoes off the walls of the chamber, so loud that the temple's four support columns ring out an answering call. The walls begin to shudder as, in places, circular sections of acid-eaten stone erupt out into the chamber floor. From these perfectly round holes pour in not only a seemingly endless supply of oozes, great and small, but also great pressurised gouts of noxious, glowing SLIME! shouts Fiona. The slime splashes down in mighty torrents, fizzing, hissing and dissolving everything it touches. In a few moments, there will be only a few areas of the chamber floor that are barren of slime, so you know that you will need to hurry if you are to make your way across. As you move to confront your foe, the oozes jiggling with an intensity you've not yet seen converge on the four great pillars, swarming up the stonework and beginning to dissolve it with their caustic juices. We need to get to the pillars, shouts Deirdre. If those supports fail... Rest assured, we're not going to let that happen, says Zot, pointing to, at the few spots of floor that are still clear. Get to the pillars! Stop that slime! 
Pookie acts before his master can finish speaking, hopping off Sot's shoulder and bouncing from bare spot to bare spot, drawing ever nearer to the hideous creatures on the nearest pillar. As you ready your weaponry and shout a desperate battle cry, the giant crabman throws back his head and replies with a gout of mocking laughter. Ha 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 ha! The laughing crab king disappears into the cavern. You are confronted by massive slimes and snapping pincers standing between you and the eroding pillars. Thanks, Rach. So we have these oozing fauna that are dotted around the map. We're playing on veteran difficulty again, which is considered the normal difficulty of the game. They're going to act every turn, whether the room is discovered or not, and they're going to deal damage to the temple foundation. If the temple foundation gets destroyed, we lose. Our objective is to not let the temple die, not let Gurky become defeated, reveal every room, and destroy every oozing fauna. A quick look at our enemies, the hardened slime. So they are gonna have a toughness token now, which I've definitely not just remembered to give them. Uh, but the big thing about them is, for all the other slimes, they're suddenly not immune to traps and acid pools. Not that there are any acid pools in this scenario, but they're not immune to traps. Oozing fauna are immobile and big bad. So immobile, they don't move, and any effects that would move them don't have any effect. Big bad means if they were to take a debuff token, they take one less of that token. Chitin guards are going to have a toughness token still, and they are resistant this time. So if they step in traps and things while they have a shield token or a toughness token, the trap doesn't go off. And gelatinous brutes, they're immune to traps. We start with three damage on the foundations at this difficulty. So let's have a look at Gurky then. So the standard attack, move, invigorate. We have sneak attack. It's a melee attack for one die, plus one damage to one foe. But it has this backstab, plus one die. Well, backstab we can see over here. If all of the targets of the attack meet at least one of these criteria, then the backstab will be in effect. So everyone you're attacking with your thing has to fit into this. But I think all of his attacks at the moment are just one foe. Maybe that'll change later. So to qualify for backstab, they either need to be adjacent to a friendly figure. So in our case, adjacent to Otto. The target needs to be on a difficult or hazardous map space. So either a trap or one of these difficult spaces and is not immune to its effects. Or the target has one or more debuff tokens. Any of them are true, we can do our backstab which is an extra die for this. Uh, Thieves Canter, move four, but any traps you pass through in this move do not trigger. And then catch your breath for Invigorate one. Gurky's skills, a little bit of contact poison always hurts. We've got four charges of this. As a reaction to you attacking, you can use this before determining damage, weaken one each target. This will enable your backstab bonus. And weaken one, the tokens build up on enemies. When they would attack, you remove all the weakened tokens and reduce the damage they're about to do by one for every token you just discarded. Hit and run, it's a three cooldown action. It lets you leaf one, a melee attack for two dice on one foe with an extra die for backstab, and then you can move four. Look over there, a distraction. A two cooldown shenanigan to leap two and give Gurky another evade token. Token. As a reminder, evade tokens let you, after taking damage, you avert any harm effect and can leap two. We already start with one because of this. And then just throwing this out there, that's a three charge action, a range three attack, two dice to one foe with a backstab bonus as well. We've got the heal four potion, the knuckles of deterrence, a shenanigan melee attack for just one die. But I also wanted this because it has a harm effect of weakening the target, which would enable backstabs on other attacks, I thought. Could be great. Looking at Otto the Swindlebot, on his turns, he will leap four, weaken one up to two adjacent foes. I thought, you know, we'll help Gurky just backstab a load of stuff and maybe enables us to take loads less damage. And a melee attack for two damage on two foes, which is quite nice as well. And looking at our power tree, we get two steps for this scenario, and I have chosen to go up this way. So another evade token and a shield token. Could have gone for the double damage or the double evade, but we'll see. Okay then, so let's go. Invigorate, nothing in the first turn. Roll scheme dice. So let's see who's doing what. The hardened slimes are going to be doing foil splat. Leap three to a foe, and then a melee attack of two damage. The oozing fauna are going to be doing fish. If this figure is not weakened, deal a damage to the temple foundations. And then a range two attack of one damage to one foe. And finally, the gelatinous brute is doing burst. Leap two to a foe. Heal two, a damaged friend in range two. 
and a melee attack of two damage on three foes. So some tough stuff to start us off with. And then fill the initiative bag with our three enemies, Gurky and the solo turn token and our two tokens for Otto. If this is the first one you've seen, by the way, I have done all the three previous scenarios. And let's see who's going first then. So hopefully us, although I don't think we're going to just destroy things to start with. Gurky. Because the Hardened Slimes are very... Weak health-wise, the toughness is a pain though, isn't it? So he's got a ranged attack of just one foe, and it's full turns in the solo mode, so we get two actions and a shenanigan. I think we're going to get in there. We're going to use our shenanigan to leap two and get yet another evade token. Hopefully there's going to be a lot of those getting used. He's going to leap into action here. He's going to use his knuckles of deterrence. Then he is going to, I think, just sneak attack twice. So the first one... We, oh yeah, we should still roll because we might inspire and get an epic die in the pool. It's going to do one plus one, two damage, but toughness negates all that damage coming in. So the toughness token's gone. And then we'll attack again. No backstab bonus, but I didn't think it was worth it because he's got the plus one damage anyway. They've only got two health. It's just the toughness is in the way. So no inspire, unfortunately. One plus one is two damage. That slime's dead. And we're off. So a shenanigan and then two attacks. Gurky's in the thick of it still, but he has got an evade, if that's going to help him. And it's his turn again. He's hoping for Otto to have a turn first, so he could you know, be adjacent for the various things we want to do. But it's okay. What we're going to do is hit and run. Just put everything on cooldown instantly. So he's once again leaping into backstabbing action, because we're doing the hit and run. So it's going to be two dice on the gelatinous brute. But what if, first of all, we put a bit of poison on that knife and we weaken that brute. So it's going to be a three yellow dice attack. I think this is the most powerful attack we've ever done. And then he can run off. So what has he got here? No crits, sadly. That is four damage and an inspire. So an epic die goes in the pool. Four out of 10 to the brute and then move four. Now we have got, as we saw in scenario two, we've got these gravel walls that basically a one damage attack will knock those walls down and reveal the next room along. We do need to do that. And then he can move four. He's actually going to stay where he is. Could be a bit of a risk. Yeah. He was going to go all the way over here and maybe, maybe be three away and do a ranged attack. But I think he's just going to stay in. He's going to do his normal sneak attack. Could do his ranged and then that's three dice and it could be the epic die as well. I could finish him off. But we've only got three charges on that. Maybe we want to use those on the fauna for a ranged attack. Yeah, he'll use his normal sneak attack. So that's going to be a die, another one because he's weakened and we can use backstab, and we'll use the epic die. We're going to have to be lucky, I think, to do six with this. So that is another four, an inspiration, but you don't get an epic die if you already used one in your roll. So that's eight out of ten now. We've got a shenanigan left. We could trust this to Otto, hope that he goes before the brute, or... We have got our Knuckles of Deterrence. Just a one die attack. We'd have to hope that did too. And it weakens the target again, which is a bit of a waste for that. But we can invigorate. It'll start cooling down. We're going to give it a shot. Let's see. The Knuckles of Deterrence. There's no backstab on this because it's just an item. Anyone could have had this. So it does. <gasps> a crit. We've done it then. So the next roll will do something. It's not an Inspire, but that is two damage. And that is a Gelatinous Bruce taken care of with some backstabby action. Next up, we have got... Oh, it is Otto as well. So a bit of a waste with that, but they will all start cooling down. So Otto has his leap four, weaken, and then melee attack. It can be two foes. So it would have been... If he'd have gone first, he could have stood in the middle, attacked both of them, got rid of both the toughness, and then on his second turn, killed them both. But you know, that's how the turn's go in it. So we could have him just wheel up to the exit, but I think he is gonna... Let's have him move two, so he's a bit closer to the exit. And he'll pivot around and get ready for some stabbing. He will weaken the hardened slime. And then his two damage attack just takes off the toughness. So the slime's still there. It's 50-50, isn't it? There's more tokens in this bag, but... Oh, there's oozing fauna as well could go next, but they're not going to affect us right now. They're just going to hit the temple. If Ye Yellow's still in there, but they've gone. So it is the oozing fauna next. So if this figure is not weakened, deal a damage to the temple foundation, and then they're going to do a range two attack. There's no one in range of that attack, but each one is going to deal a damage to the foundations. So it's got six out of 35 damage now. Next up is going to be Otto. So is he going to go and get the door? 
It'll save Gurky a job if he's first next time. So what's the slime going to do? Leap three to someone and do a two damage attack. We could just avoid that entirely. Maybe Otto will even go first next time and we can open a room up. Yeah, I'm going to be a bit more cautious. Next up is yellow. They're, they're dead. And so it's the slime. Oh, wait a minute. I haven't done Otto's turn. We're being cautious, aren't we? We killed the slime. Yeah, he's standing where he is. Weaken them again and uh, do his two damage attack. Lost in my thoughts then. Okay then, so nobody's alive this round yet, which is bad. Yeah, maybe I should have revealed the room and just let the slime attack us a bit. Oh well, the decision was made. So we have not completed the objective. Invigorate all abilities, because now when we reveal the room, they're going to get a go this round. Whereas if we'd revealed it just with Otto's turn, that slime would have gotten to attack. And maybe any that we revealed in whichever room it was we were about to reveal. But any gelatinous brutes would already have gone. Okay then, so let's see who's going to be first in this. Oh, I haven't rolled my scheme dice. No one's alive yet, are they? Oh, just the fauna would get rolled. For now, anyway. And they are doing sizzle fizzle. If the figure is not weakened, deal the damage to the foundations. Put a two damage trap in the nearest unoccupied space. Making it harder to get to them. At least, actually, Gurky's uh, movement isn't going to trigger the traps, so it's probably good to have him about. It is the oozing fauna first, and they are going to deal a damage each, aren't they? And pop their traps out. Hoping for Otto first, I think. I don't know. Well, it'd be alright with either, wouldn't it? It's Gurky. Okay, then. So which room should we go to? Yeah, it might have been better to be attacked by that slime. Then he could have used his evade to leap and be next to this. So it's going to be an action to spin around and move, I think. Let's move there. And then we'll do our normal attack on this. We might add an epic die, you never know. Uh, it's one damage, which destroys the gravel wall. And we're going to reveal the lower passage. As the gravel crumbles, you immediately duck under a volley of muck fired from the crabmen guarding this passage's acid-spewing plant... animal... things? And in here, we have found a couple of Chitin Guards and a Gelatinous Brute. So the Chitin Guard does not roll, always does this extensive reach. Let's roll for the Gelatinous Brute to see what they're doing. They are going to be leaping to healing and doing a melee attack. The Guard, range three attack. If they do harm, it jumps to them and then move three to a wounded foe. So it kind of at the moment makes sense to stay out of their way. They can't do anything right now. Unless we get another turn before them. And also red and yellow need to go into the bag. So he moved. Oh, he did his normal attack, didn't he? So he's only got a shenanigan left. So there's nothing to do anyway. The only the only shenanigan he's got available is to heal. So it's someone else's turn then. Who is that somebody? It's going to be the Chitting God. So a range three attack of two on a foe. Nobody is in range three of either of these guys. So move three towards a wound, wounded foe. Or if no foe is wounded, the foe with the least remaining fortitude. Oh, that would be Gurky. So move three to Gurky. One, two, three. No problem. One, two, three. Next up is Otto. So I think he is going to wheel around. One, two, three, four. Let's get in range of people. It means he is going to be in range of the brute if he goes there. So maybe he wants to stay on this side, actually, of the guard. He's going to leap two and then do a melee attack. Yeah, we'll stay there and see what the next turn counter is. So he's going to attack the Chitting Guard. Or actually, it's a leap, isn't it? So he could, if he wanted to, one, two, three, four, he could leap right to the Oozing Fauna. Or to these and weaken both of these. He's going to leap to the Oozing Fauna. So weaken one up to two foes. He's going to weaken it. And then he does two damage to it. Only got six health. It's more effective to go up to multiple, but... Yeah, let's, uh, let's see how it goes. Who is going to be next? It is Otto again. And I think this time he's going to leap to be adjacent to two of them because the slime's going to get to him anyway. So he weakens the brute and the guard and then attack for two damage each. The guard just loses its toughness and the brute takes two damage. So it'll do less damage as well when it's since it hasn't gone yet. Giving a bit of a reprieve there, I think. Uh, then it's Gurky. Okay, so that's not going to move. Gurky just needs to come in, doesn't he? I think slip through the legs of that guard. One, two, three, four. Use his normal move. And he can ignore traps if that mattered. He has got the ranged attack, of course. So he's used his move. He's got a shenanigan and an action. He can just use his normal attack. He's unlikely to do four damage with that. Two dice plus one. It's possible, isn't it? He only needs to get three on the dice. One is the most likely on the dice, but what else is he going to do? Everything else is on cooldown, unless he does his big ranged attack. 
just a shame he was four away if he could have done that. Because if he can kill it, it's not going to get to go. And that's a damage saved, isn't it? Oh, it's already gone though, hasn't it? It went really early on. So it has already gone this round. I could stop it going next round though. That's one of the things done. I think sneak attack, let's hang on to those charges. We've got nothing that gives them back to us and just hope we can roll three damage on these dice. We get the backstab because it's weakened. And we get, okay, only two, three damage. So it survives with one health. Always wish you had one more damage token. Uh, but we do get two inspire. That only puts one die in the pool. But if there'd already been one in the pool, that would have added one. Okay, I think it is just the brute to go then. Yes. So leap two to a foe. It's already at a foe, so it'll stay where it is. Heal two, a damaged friend in range two. Well, the only damaged friend is the fauna that's more than two away. So that's pretty good, actually. Melee attack for two damage. So we discard all the weakened. And it reduces the damage by one because there was one weakened on it. Just one damage to Otto, who has 14 health. Objectives nothing then invigorate so nearly got the knuckles back nearly got hit and run back we've got uh, look over there a distraction back scheme dice the oozing fauna are going to be doing sizzle fizzle again putting traps out and the gelatinous brute will be doing caburst once more so same stuff goes in there it would be nice to just get out and run off from the gods we don't move that much, do we? So first up is the Brute. So it's already at a foe. Heal two, there's nobody to heal. Does a melee attack for two damage. Otto's just got to take that, but at least that's over with. And Otto's kind of blocking it off, stopping it doing more stuff. Now it's the gods, that's unfortunate. So range three attack. So we're both in range of this, and then the god is going next to whoever it attacks. So this one will attack Gurky, and Gurky will use his shield token. So the harm effect doesn't go off, it doesn't jump in. Or maybe it would have been good to weaken it. And this one will just attack Otto, but it is weakened. So it gets rid of its weaken, and it's just one damage on him. It's already next to him. Oh, and then move three to wounded foe. So he would move to Otto with his move. He's already on Otto. So everyone counts for backstab because they're all next to Otto. And I think that's... Oh, we've got the fauna to worry about, but they're not attacking us. Gurky is going to just do his sneak attack on the oozing fauna. So the one in this room is dead. One inspire isn't enough to put another epic die in there. We yeah, only had one health left, so that's fine. So one of the three oozing fauna is dealt with. He's gonna distract, he's gonna leap two. Let's go to six because six can be damaged. And gain an evade token, not that he's been attacked. Oh, he actually could have used his evade, but he wanted to stay next to the fauna still. And then he's gonna use one of his poison charges to weaken the guard first. I think just use his sneak attack again. So this is doing three, four damage. It's got eight health. So that's two actions and a shenanigan, isn't it? He's got all of the use out of his turn there. I think of all the enemies gone. I think so. I think it's just me and Otto in there. So Otto is tempted to leap. So he's going to weaken one, both of these two. Yeah, the ones that aren't weakened yet. Well, he could weaken this one again. So he isn't going to attack. No, weaken you, weaken you, because he's probably going to be dead, we're hoping, and he's going to deal damage to both guards, so that is going to be six out of eight damage on him, and he loses the toughness, and then we're hoping for Otto going before Gurky now, and it is Gurky. So he's only got two damage, Otto can finish him off, it's just a shame, if that had died, I would have invigorated hit and run, jumped there, and done the massive attack on the brute it's just otto's two damage will kill this but this is the thing that gurky's adjacent to let's so we've got all of our stuff i don't think there's any shenanigans to be used let's move four one two three okay let's move three of that four then so we can still attack holding on to these ranged attacks or maybe we'll just run off from this and is he going to do a sneak attack as the other thing could use the epic die let's do it and then we can Get it back more easily, can't we? Watch me roll two inspire now. Oh, I didn't. So that's three, four, five. I mean, we could chain crits or get three more on this. Always the way, isn't it? Typical. Seven damage. But well, that does mean now we could leave the brute alive, and on Otto's turn, he can just kill both those guards. So next up is oh, the fauna haven't gone yet. So both fauna are doing a damage each to the foundation. It's got eleven damage. A two damage trap in the spaces closest. 
bit tougher to get to them. And that's it. And finally, Otto. He's going to stay where he is, so he's right next to both of these. It would be nice to get to a door. He's going to weaken the gelatinous brute, and then he's going to attack both of the chitting guards. With their one and two health remaining, they are both dead. And I think that's a pretty good round. Okay, objective phase, we've not won. Then invigorate all abilities. We've got the knuckles back. We've got the hit and run back. Roll the scheme dice. So the, f yeah, the fauna and the brute are still alive. Fauna are doing fish. So they damage the foundations, do a ranged attack. And then Gelatinous Brute is now doing Smothering Ooze. Move three to a foe, a melee attack of two damage, and then the harm effect swaps spaces with the target. I mean, the harm would be the bad thing. Oh, actually, it wouldn't do the harm effect because it's got two weakness on it. It's not going to do any damage. It's not going to do any harm. So that's actually brilliant. And then fill the initiative bag. I think I've put a red in here when there shouldn't be one in there. So who's up? It is the Fauna first. So there's no one for them to ranged attack. They do two damage to the foundations. It's got 35 health. I'm feeling a bit better about that. Then it is Otto's turn. And I think it's a bit risky, but we got to do it. Let's move him. He is going to weaken. Well, it doesn't really matter weakening him because he's already at the point where he can't do any damage. We will anyway, though. Uh, and then his attack is going to be on the ooze and the wall. This chamber is massive, with the worst infestation of slime spitting spawn coating the walls. So there is a bit more here in the back passage. Who's up next? It's going to be Otto again. I think then since it's a leap, oh, this could be really dangerous for him. Or it could be amazing. He is going to leap in one, two, three, four spaces because the difficult terrain doesn't matter if you're leaping. Look, he's so far behind though. <laughs> he's going to weaken both of the hardened slimes and then he is going to attack, let's say number four, get rid of its toughness, and the gravel wall. Because then gurky has got a bit of a shorter path here especially to get to the good stuff. Doesn't have to come this way around and all the way up. But Otto is in trouble. I mean, the slimes haven't gone. The guards haven't gone. Oh, who need to go into here now? And the slimes need the die rolling. My leg, move three, melee attack of one damage and then swap spaces with the target. Oh, they are actually, they're weakened now though. So the slimes aren't a problem. The guards will do a bit of damage though. And so all the brutes. So first of all, this one. So it'll move three to a foe. Now Gurky's the closest one. Deal two damage. It's got three weakened on it, so does nothing. And then if it harms swap spaces with the target, it didn't. So move three. Oh, well, actually, this is going to be a problem for this ooze. Oh, it can move through friendly figures, can't it? One, two, three. So attack for two damage. So he's got six damage on him now. And then if you did harm, swap spaces with the target. Okay, who's next? It is Gurky. Gurky is going to move. We're going to abandon this brute for now. I'm sure we'll be back. And Gurky's going to run one, two, three, four. And then it's hit and run time. He is going to leap into action. See the Look at the brute there, quivering with fear. And because he's adjacent to Otto, he counts for the backstab. That's going to be three yellow dice on the gelatinous brute. And only two damage, that, well, three damage. And then a crit, four, five damage. Decent start, isn't it? That's half of his health. So we've had the move. We've had the hit and run. He can still move four. And he's going to, he is going to sneak around. One, two, three, four. So he is now going to be the target of this guy's attack, unfortunately. But we don't want to waste the movement, do we? And we've still got a shenanigan. We can do a one die attack on the guard. A crit as well. One damage plus another one. Always hoping for an inspire and put some epic dice in the pool. So, oh, well, that guard should be tough. So has lost his toughness but can be weakened, so that's going to help a little bit with the attack. It does mean he's going to be in the way, though, of the fauna. He's going to do damage to Gherky, and then Gherky is the one that he wants to go to. Okay, good turn, I think. Then it is the Chitting Guard. So a two damage attack, discards the weakness, and he's going to do one to Gherky. But then I think it's time for Gherky to spend one of his evades. So the harm won't happen. He can leap two. He's going to leap two back here. And then the Chitin God move three to a wounded foe. They're both wounded, but he's going to go in this space anyway, I think. It's just a wounded foe. It's not the most wounded foe. So that's him done. Then it's the hardened slimes. So move three towards a foe. 
So number four first. I can move two, three there. Attack for one damage, but they're both weakened. So nothing for them and no swapping spaces because they didn't do any harm. And Otto, yeah, he did need to take out the door. It's a shame that he can't just, for his next turn, is he's still got a turn. No, it's Gurky's still got a turn. For his next turn, he could have you know, done two damage to them both. But I think it's important to open the door and get Gurky in a bit faster. So now I was thinking Gurky would just use his four movements and not set off traps and get next to this. Is that a bit too soon though? Should he just attack things that he's next to? I think it's a bit too soon and he should attack things that he's next to. Just again, he's four range away from the plant. He wants to leap this far away though, so he would come in range of taking some damage. And if he gets attacked again, he could maybe leap in closer to the actual plant. It's just that he wants to use his special move so he can walk in and not take the trap damage. Could even just open this and start attacking that plant from here. Now it's full range again and everything's always four away. Right, I think he's going to stay where he is. Because the chasing guard is next to Otto, he counts as um, backstabbable. So it's going to be two dice. I think we're just going to do that. Stay where we are and attack the chasing guard. Which, it's seven who's got the toughness and Gurky's not next to number seven. Yeah, hang on to that. So first one, it's going to be, we've got an Inspire for a start. Two, reroll this. Three, four, five damage on the Chitting Guard. And we might, well, because of the backstabbing, we might get rid of him with the next roll here. <gasps> double crit. So there we go. There's already the three damage that we need. But maybe we'll get a double Inspire and get another epic die in this pool. No, there was one Inspire, which is pretty nice. So that guard's taken care of. Seven, can't believe it. And I think that is everybody for this round. So we have not won yet. Invigorate all abilities. So look over there, a distraction is back. Roll the scheme dice. So the slimes are going to be doing the same. Move in melee attack, swap spaces. The fauna are going to be doing ranged attacks. So that might play into how close we want to get. And the Uzis are going to try and smother again, do some swapping of spaces. And, oh, I've put the red in the bag when they shouldn't be in there. I'm sure there'll be one in that last room. So then we are getting Gurky's turn first. So he's not next to anything right now. I think he's going to have to take some damage. He is going to move in with his Thieves' Canter, charging right at the oozing fauna. And because it's his Thieves' Canter, it doesn't set off the trap. And then he is going to use his standard sneak attack, but he's going to put a bit of poison on that blade. Weaken the fauna first. So actually, the ranged attack isn't going to do any damage. And yeah, his sneak attack. So he gets two dice. And I think... Let's get that epic die used. Because potentially, this could do six damage. So what have we got? Oh, Two crits, that is wonderful. It's probably going to get an Inspire here. So already that is five. And six, seven, eight damage. Boom. That Fauna is absolutely smashed. Any shenanigans? We don't need to heal four. We're doing pretty all right, I feel like. I like this game very well. And then it's time for the Oozing Fauna. So this one deals a damage to the Foundations, which it feels like we're in a pretty good position with that. And then does a range attack of two. Nothing's in range. Unless it wants to attack the gravel walls for us. Then it's going to be Gurky. I think he's going to sidle along again. One, two, three, four. And he is going to backstab that brute. So no epic die this time. He's still got five health left. But you never know. Could be amazing. Uh, not so amazing, but it has put the epic die back in. And that's amazing. Otto can use that if we wanted to. So that's three damage in total. He's got two health left. Next up is going to be the hardened slimes. Unfortunately, they're not weakened this time. So four is next to Otto. Move to a foe. Attack for one damage. So Otto's going to take a damage there and then swap places with the target. Number seven is going to do that to Gurky. So a damage to Gurky. He's going to use an evade. So no swapping spaces with Gurky. So you avert the harm phase. And he is going to do a magnificent leap, I think, over to the door. Maybe we'll do that next time. Could still attack Slime 4 if you wanted to. Next up, we have Otto. So I think Otto's going to stay where he is. And yeah, he's weakened both of these, but it doesn't matter. They've both got two health left and no toughness on number four. He's going to kill them both. So really thinning out their numbers there. Otto goes again. And I think Otto is going to open that door. Leap 4. One, two, th we only need three, thanks. 
and he is going to attack this gravel wall. The acrid smell of acid and slime hits your nose hard when this passage is opened and the floor is moving. That's probably not good either. And here's what we find in the upper passage. A couple more hardened slimes and a gelatinous brute standing in the way of our target. And oh, Gurky's four away again. So he attacks three. Oh well, he'll get there. So that's Otto's go. And it's, unfortunately for us, I forgot the brutes hadn't gone. So move three towards a foe. I don't know if this one's ever going to get to us. Okay, this is the fastest route. Three towards us. This one is going to go three towards a foe. Two damage. I think Gurky's going to take that. He could always heal, couldn't he? And then swap spaces with the target. He doesn't mind that at all because now he's within three range of the fauna. Or actually, do you know what? Otto wants to take that damage. He could always heal Otto with the potion. So he moves there, swap spaces with Otto because then Otto's in the middle of him. Okay, that's the round then. Objective's not complete. We've revealed all the rooms, but... We need to kill one more fauna, then invigorate all the abilities. We've still got our leap shenanigan as well. So Gurky could always use that to get in range. Scheme dice. We've got all of these people, haven't we? So we have got Nomput and Kaburst from our enemies. Can we get this over before this gelatinous brute catches up with us? It is Otto first. So I think Otto's going to stay where he is. He's going to weaken both of these. Oh, they should actually be tough, shouldn't they? So number six and number two are weakened. And then two damage to each. So your toughness just goes away and you take two damage. Then we have the brutes. So leap two towards a foe. Heal a damaged friend within range two. That's nobody. Melee attack, two damage, three foes. Nope. And this one, though. Leap two towards foe, it's at a foe. Heal two, a damaged friend. Is he a friend of himself? No. I figure does not count as a friend to itself. So no healing. Melee attack. Both of us are getting two damage. So can't really do anything about that. Otto's got a lot of damage. But I think we'll use an evade token here. And just leap in a bit over the <laughs> great big gelatinous brute. Still want to take it down. But now we're in range attack range of the fauna if we want to do that. Okay, brute's down. We would like to go before the slimes. It's the fauna. So they're doing a ranged attack. So Gurky's just put himself in range of that. So a damage coming from the fauna. And it's also doing a damage to the temple foundation. Then it's... Oh dear, the slimes. That's a shame. Loads of turns for us afterwards though. So the slimes are moving three to a foe. One, two, three. Melee attack and then swap spaces. Can't. You're already at a foe. Melee attack, swap spaces, one, two, three. Not so bad then. Oh, number six actually was weakened. Can't do the damage to Otto and so can't swap spaces with him. That's something. He's got three health left, but it's all us now, I think. Next up is Otto. He's going to stay where he is. He'll weaken both of them. Actually, we should, we should have taken one damage less each off this. He still would have... Yeah, because he was weakened. So he's getting weakened again, getting excited. Right, so two damage to six is going to kill it. Two damage to the brute isn't quite. Still got six health left. And then I think it's double Gurky time. So first of all, Gurky will try sneaking attack this turn. Yeah, maybe just use the epic die. So we want to do six damage to this. It's a bit unlikely, isn't it? And what have we got here? Two, three, four, five. So very close. Can't put an epic die back in yet. Okay, then he'll just use his other turn to do it again. Hopefully get an Inspire and put that epic die back. Yes, we did. So one, two, three, four, five. More damage on it. Dead. So he's done with. Gurky's still got a shenanigan. So he could heal himself back up to full. But I think we're going to heal Otto with it. So the potion's gone. I know Otto regenerates after three turns. And he gets two turns around, but it would be better to keep him in it for a bit. And he can still get wounded. He's essentially got 12 more health. So another turn. Oh, you're defeated. You should go. I think we're going to save the ranged attacks for now. I could leap over to the fauna. I could just stay here, do the ranged attack. 
and weaken it. I've still got two more ranged attacks. It'll be the last weaken when you attack something. Let's do it. First action. We'll stay here. Will we? If we kill it, then it'll be the objective phase and we'll move on because it's our objective. It doesn't say our win condition. And if you remember the story, I don't think this is the last thing. Would it be better to wait around? He's going to invigorate his knuckles. He's going to move over to number seven and he's going to attack with his knuckles and weaken in case they go first. So it's just one die. We're not going to add an epic die with this. Oh, it crits. Two damage, but he had toughness. So that just goes away. I think it's maybe better to hang on. All of this will cool down. Oh, that gets three on it. So it'll now have two on it. Just they might get to go first, might they? And there, there is this still to consider. But hopefully we'll go before it. Let's see. And hopefully before the Oozing Fauna. Or we've just let it do another one. So the Scheme Dice. The Slimes are leaping and splatting. The Fauna are ranged attacking. And the Brutes are leaping and healing. And first up it is the Slimes. So leap three to a foe. So he'll just leap to Otto. Two damage attack on that foe and he is already at Gurky uh, and that means he is weakened so he's just doing one damage to Gurky. It's still not great. I preferred them to roll the other thing where they only do one damage. And he's not weakened now but it's all right I think. They're out of the way. Next up is Otto. The Brute hasn't gone yet so he is gonna go one two three to the Brute, weaken it and do two damage because it's coming in ready to do a load of damage and the slimes are already gone. We want Gurky to go and hopefully take that fauna out. It is the brute next. So leap two to a foe. It's right next to one. There is no one to heal. It does a melee attack for two damage, but it's weakened. So just one more damage. So that's nine damage on Otto. Next up is hopefully Gurky. There we go. Gurky. So he's going to do his move and don't set off traps and then his sneak attack, but weaken as he's sneak attacking. That's the last use of that gone. So that's two dice on it. it needs to do six damage. Yeah, we're going to go epic. I've got another turn after this. And he gets... Oh, oh, that's okay, isn't it? Three, four, five, six damage. Perfect. Thought we just missed out on it. Remembered the plus one. So they are defeated. Next up is Gurky once again. So I think we're going to move over to seven. Just with his normal move and hope to kill it. So we don't get our backstabby bonus, but... Oh, we get an epic die, so definitely worth it. One, two damage. Kills number seven. He's clearing things out a little bit. So he moved, he attacked. He's got a shenanigan. A shenanigan leap and get an evade token. It's nice, but it'd be better to save it, I think. Next up is Otto. I think he's just going to stay where he is. Weaken the ooze. Two more damage to it. It's only got two health left. Would be nice. He wants to he'll be knocking the toughness off the slime, but it's all right. And then finally, I think it's the, the flowers, but they're gone. So, objective phase. The Crab King howls with rage as the last of the acid spitters is crushed. He blows his conch once more, summoning the deadly remnants of his horde to his side. Now, depending on the difficulty and the hero count, he comes in with an amount of toughness tokens. So for veteran uh, with one hero, that's two toughness tokens and he gets one initiative token. Harder difficulties or harder player count, he gets two turns around. So the remaining gravel walls get removed and reinforcements have arrived. And here come the Crab King. We lose if anyone is defeated or the Temple Foundation is defeated. We win if it's the objective phase and the Crab King and all oozing fauna have been defeated. So you might notice the Crab King is kind of like a hero here. He's got a fresh side and a wounded side. Uh, we will trigger an event if we can wound the Crab King. So big bad, we know that he ignores the first token that's put on him or you reduce the number of debuffs you're putting on him by one. Uh, he is resistant, so while he's got toughness, he's immune to traps. And his attacks, Lordly Blitz, move three to a foe, attack for two damage, and if he did harm, place the target on a trap within range three. Master and Commander, activate Lordly Blitz. The nearest fiend activates its top scheme. Scary stuff happening. So I think everyone's back in the bag here. Invigorate all abilities. At least we've got those. And we're not a million miles away from everybody. And on the scheme dice, the slimes are leaping and doing their bigger attacks. The fauna are putting traps out. The gods don't roll. The brutes are smothering. And the Crab King is doing his Lordly Blitz, which is better than its bigger attack enter. And so, are we going to be able to get through this? Otto is first. The slimes kind of 
blocking this offloads. The slime is moving through and doing a melee attack. If we can both go before it, we can get away from both these slimes and have them not activate. Kind of lead them into this room. So I think Otto is going to go up the back passage. One, two, three. Yeah, let's have him go the full four. He's still next to something. He's not got a lot of health, so I don't think jumping into that room is going to be a great idea. He does respawn, doesn't he? Oh, this has gone wonky from me putting that camera about. Then he weakens and attacks. Hopefully just not let them do as much. So this hat just takes the toughness off. Then it's the Chitin Guard. So a range three attack. He's miles away from everyone. No harm effect. Move three towards a wounded foe. Or both wounded. So he will try and get closest. One, two, three. He's kind of protecting uh, the king over there. Next up is... Oh, it's just enemy time here. So move three towards a foe. The brute will ooze over. Unfortunately can get next to Gurky. He's weakened though, so that's something. If three towards foe, attack for two damage. So that's just going to be one damage. And swap spaces with the target. Not quite next to Otto. And then this one. Move three towards a foe. I'll actually go this way towards Gurky. But can't do a melee attack. So that's them for this turn. The Crab King. So move three towards a foe. One, two, three. We'll go towards Otto. Melee attack is nothing for now. So Otto's probably going to go in and... Start wearing away those toughness tokens next time he goes. Gurky. It's not going to be possible to weaken him. We need Otto next to him to do the backstab stuff. He's just going to move in. He's going to move right in. Get to the Crab King. We're just going to start attacking. We're actually going to attack the slime first. Are we? Are we? No, attack the Crab King. So it is with no backstab. So two damage, but he's just got a toughness. So that's gone. We still got a shenanigan. The shenanigan is leap and get the evade token. Not yet. Next up is the Fauna who is going to put a trap out and do another damage to the temple. Seems like the, the health of the temple is a lot more lenient than the market. Let's go with that. Then it's the slimes. So leap three to a foe. One, two, three. Melee attack, no. Uh, he's already at a foe. Who's he going to attack? Let's say Otto, because otherwise Gurky's wounded. And the Crab King's probably going to be doing enough attacks. Oh, I see this going really badly. Then Otto is next. Otto's going to wheel around. Actually, he's got to wheel around this way. I can, he can just leap. I don't know why he's wheeling around. It's just because I like it. Oh, just realised he should do one less damage because he was weakened. Does he stay here and hit the Crab King in the slime? Or does he come over and weaken the Chitting Guard, who's potentially more dangerous? Stay here for now. Take out the slime and weaken the Crab King. Well, he can't weaken him because he reduces it by one, but take off his left toughness at least. Okay, he is attackable. And Otto's next to him, so backstab is available, and it's Gurky's turn. So first of all, I think we're going to try... We're going to just, just, just do this ranged attack. I haven't done any yet. We've got three of them. So one, two, three dice. We're going to use the epic die. Yeah, backstab works because we're next to him. And let's see what we can do here. So we have got a load of inspiration when it's not useful. Four, six damage. That's pretty nice. So do we do that again, or... I think we just go for the normal sneak attack and save that because any damage over nine that we do to him is going to get negated like it would to us. Let's see what happens when we wound him. This is the end of the round, actually. We can't do anything after this. So that's an inspiration. So the epic die goes back in and it's two, three damage already, but why not? Let's see what else would happen. And that's enough to wound the Crab King, but that triggers an event. Got to do this, and we've still got to do the oozing fauna and survive the round. Oh dear. <laughs> Just seen the things that he's doing. So he gets his toughness tokens back. A gelatinous brute has spawned next to him. And his attacks now are the double sludge cannon. Move three towards a foe. Range four attack, doing three damage to two foes. Oh dear. If you harm, put a three damage trap next to him. Or snatching crab hammer, give him a shield. Move two towards a foe, and then a range two attack of three damage. If the target spends any shield tokens, gain a shield token. Well, we haven't got any jugs on you. We are unshielded. Okay, we haven't completed the objective, and I'm quite worried about that. Everyone's in the bag. Invigorate your abilities. I wonder, should I have done the leap? It wouldn't have done more damage. It would have moved him away, is the thing. Maybe I should have. So the knuckles are ready as well. Roll the scheme dice. The slimes, or the, the only slime that's left, is doing a leap. 
for a shame. It could get to anyone anyway with a move. Uh, the Oozing Fauna is going to be putting another trap out. That's a pain. And the Gelatinous Brute is bursting and healing. Oh, we don't want that. And the Crab King is, oh dear, doing its snatching crab hammer. Gaining shields. We don't want that. But who's going first? It is the Chitin God. So he's already in range of Otto. So Otto takes three damage. He's got 13 damage out of 14. He gets placed in the nearest occupied space and then he moves to a wounded foe. He's already at a wounded foe. Oh, nobody's wounded, are they? The least remaining fortitude. He's got one fortitude left. I think I've been doing that right. Wounded is the other side, isn't it? It's good. He's got two fortitude left. Now the chain guards attacked. The fauna goes next. A damage to the temple and a two damage trap in the nearest space to the fauna. Let's just hey, it's just deciding to shore up the wrong side. Oh, that chain guard's right in the way now. Oh, luckily Otto can leap. Next up is Otto. Is he going to stay where he is? Or is he going to try and take care of the fauna? Oh, but if he moves to take care of the fauna. We don't get the backstab bonus. So he's going to stay where he is. He will weaken the two of them. Doesn't affect the Crab King. Two damage on the Crab King. The guard gets weakened and takes two damage. So that's all right. He's still got a toughness though. Gurky next. Right. So his knuckles. Shenanigan do the knuckles. One, two, three. One die. We're just doing this to get rid of the toughness token. It might have put a... Inspire, I suppose, but it hasn't. Okay, I don't know why I'm moving that. Right. That takes a tough token. That's what I want to take off, not the dice. Okay, so I want hit and run to be the last thing that Gurky does. Although I, I don't know where we're running. One, two, three, four. Still going to be right next to two brutes. I suppose we could try and leap, use our evade once we're, I don't know. Right, and maybe we want to save two ranged attacks. For the fauna, we're going to do sneak attack. So that's two dice. We're going to use the epic dice because maybe this attack will put an epic die back in. And we get it's the time you don't want to inspire. So we're just doing the sneak attack. Four damage and then a crit. Could this be three more? Yes, seven damage. The Crab King is one piece of the puzzle. We've still got to survive, but he hasn't been wounded yet. Okay, and then hit and run. He won't leap first. Then he's going to do his three dice because backstab's in effect because Otto's there. He only needs to do two damage. Crab King hasn't had a chance to do his shield yet. Okay, so that's two, three, four and put the epic die back. Sorry, Crab King. We were right to make fun of you at the start. Your fawn is still damaging the foundations though. And as the Crab King falls... Gurky gets to run four away. One, two, three. I think four? That's come there. So if Gurky goes next. Or actually, four there. He's still going to be in range of the brutes. He's he's in three range of the flower. If he does it with one attack, which is unlikely because of the back. If Otto goes first, leaps in there, weakens, then he can use his backstab. If he does six on the roll, he can use his next action to move away and hopefully survive the round better. Uh-oh, it's probably going to get damaged. Uh-oh. But who is next? Who hasn't gone? Every, it's just the, the gods and the, the king didn't get to go. Just the god went, didn't he? Next up is the slimes. So, leaping three to a foe. Oh, the downside of that is it can leap straight to Gurky. Two damage. He's not been weakened. Gurky is on six damage and is getting wounded. So he flips over. And what changes? He can't invigorate anymore, but now he has got extra bad poison. If your attack damages a foe, it gets weakened. Oh, is that the only one? Oh yeah, we killed the other one. So no invigorate anymore, but he's got extra bad poison. A reaction when your attack does damage, it weakens the foe. And so who's next? It's the Brutes. The Fauna haven't gone. They're going to put a trap out, but we're not planning on going there anyway. The Brutes haven't gone. Ideally, Otto and then me. The Brutes are doing two damage each. And Gurky's got eight health again, so I think that's okay. And he's got an evade to leap away from maybe the second one? I'm not really sure. Let's see, though. Next up is Gurky. So that means he can do his ranged attack, but it can't be... There is no backstab involved. So he's three away from the fauna. 
So it is still two dice, and we've got the epic die in the pool. Can this do six damage to the oozing fauna? Quite possibly. I think yes, that's guaranteed it. So four, and then reroll the crits. Six, eight damage to the fauna. It is obliterated. That was his first one, wasn't it? So that's his first action. So sorry, Otto. But his second action is going to be running away very fast. One, two, three, four. And then he's got a shenanigan where he can leap to. Hopefully that's enough. I feel like it's the kind of thing Gurky would do. Next up is Otto. <laughs> I don't think Otto is going to have as much luck getting away. He can try weakening things, can't he? Yeah, he'll leap to the other side of this thing. He will weaken it, but it's not going to be enough. It does, three, it does two damage, and he has got one health. Then it's going to be the brute. I think the last token in here is the... Oh, it's the boss. He's still in there. So this one leaps to Otto, but can't do anything. This one hits Otto for one and puts him into recovery mode. So not destroyed. Oh, this one should have taken two damage, shouldn't it? Uh, and then this one is close enough to both of them. So let's have him just leap over there. And then objective phase, we've done it. With a cry of fury surprising for one normally so friendly and pious, Deirdre sweeps up the dead crabman's conch and bashes it against the floor until it shatters into pieces. The moment the conch is sundered, the slime still pouring into the chamber slows to a trickle, and the few remaining oozes begin to burble across the floor, making a relatively speedy retreat to the holes and fissures through which they issued. In a few moments, they are gone. You look around, surveying the damage. The pillars holding up the great temple will need to be repaired and reinforced before too long, but for now, they are still strong enough to bear the weight of the holy place above them. Relieved and grateful for your success, you and the other party members swat one another on the back, congratulate each other, and laugh at the irregular holes the slimes have eaten into your clothing. As you stand there surveying your hard-fought victory, a large contingent of priests and paladins enter the room from one of the passageways leading out to the rest of the Undercity. Shouting prayers of thanks to Greyport's gods, they run over to you, talking over one another as they try to ask you what happened. Sea creatures sought to pull down the great temple, says Deirdre, kicking at the broken remains of the Crab King with a delicate foot. This one seemed to be their leader, but we stopped him. By the burning mane, shouts one of the high priests of Karash. We had no idea anything of the sort was occurring until the temple started to shake. Had you not been here to stem the tide, I fear we would have arrived too late to stop them. As the priests and paladins look at one another with sober and horrified expressions, Gurky guffaws, clutching at his stomach with both hands. The high priest of Korash regards him with a sharply raised eyebrow. After a long moment, Gurky manages to get himself under control, though he is a red-faced, weepy and still giggling a little. I get it, he says, looking at the sombre, confused faces of the assembled clergy. Stand the tide? Of the sea creatures? No? Er... Uh, too soon? Oh, that was unintentional, says the high priest with a shrug. Anyway, you have our boundless and sincere gratitude for your bravery here today. Please accompany us to the great temple. We cannot offer much ourselves, other than our curative and restoration magics, but I would imagine that the Grand Cleric Ahava will be able to give you a more earthly reward for your great deeds. Sounds good to me, says Gurky. Lead the way, your holinesses. Thanks, Rach. So it is time to delve into our vault and we are getting a lot of things out because this is the end of chapter one. So some cards are also going to get archived here for the first time. So they're not going to be available again, but this only happens when the game replaces them with better versions. Let's have a look at some goodies, eh? The Claw Hammer, presumably we got from the Crab King. It gives you a shield token, three cooldown actions to do a melee attack with two dice on one foe and grab the target if you harm it. The Bandolier of Righteous Flash Bombs, three charges. Oh, it's a minor thing as well. You and all friends in range two, heal two, and weaken all foes in range two. That is pretty great. Weaken two as well. So that would have worked on the big bads, the Fauna and the Crab King. Would still have put one weaken on them. So probably very good for Gurky to have about. Only a few charges. The Potion of Scrapes and Bruises. 
you are an adjacent friend, heal four, and it's got two charges on it. And this is one that we are archiving, the old potion of scrapes, because now we've got a better version of it. It works twice, so why would you ever take this? And then we have some new abilities. So from now on, everybody is going to have extra things that they can choose from, and you will pick which four you want to go in with. So Deirdre now gets a range 3 attack for 2 dice and does some splash damage. Very nice. And the goddess is generous with her gifts. A 1 cooldown action. I don't know what this is yet. This is in chapter 2, which I haven't played yet. You may discard a die from the epic pool. If you do, use a lightning action or shenanigan on one of your equipped hero or item cards for free. You do not spend the token from that card or an additional ability tile. Eve loses archives her original description of her illusions and gets a new description she can now have two out at a time and her new ability card slight of mind a five cooldown action choose a foe in range five you move three that foe then stun it so a new thing i don't think we've had any stunning before if that figure is now adjacent to another foe it deals three damage to an adjacent foe and all together now four cooldown and here we go if you're wondering why like a normal attacks didn't use the illusions to attack it's because this, in any order, you and each of your illusions, so remember, two illusions, or if she's wounded, three illusions can be out at once, a range two attack doing a yellow dive damage plus one, potentially with an epic die, or several epic dives. I don't think that's happened so far in our scenarios, because I'm spending them all, we're not doing as powerful attacks, but you get epic dice when you roll more inspiration than there are epic dice in there, so you can end up with loads if you can roll a load of yellow dice in your attacks. Fiona gets, I instinctively aim for the head. Trigger this when an attack damages you, avert harm, and you counter attack with three yellow dice. Luckily for me, I was wearing my armor, two shield tokens, and you can discard this as a reaction when an attack damages you, avert harm, then heal two and gain two shields. Gurky, yeah, I'm full of surprises. For three charges, well, gets three charges, and then you can spend it for two different things. For a shenanigan, you can do a range three attack of one damage on a foe and weaken it. Or you can spend a charge from this to use a charge action or shenanigan on one of your equipped item cards for free. So if he's got that, you know, heal and weaken everything card, he could get extra uses out of it with this. Or have a nice trip, four cooldown action, move four, then attack with one die, one foe, with a backstab bonus of a die. And after the attack, you can move the target three. Gog help. So damage boost token and a shield token for three cooldown. Choose an adjacent figure. Place that figure in range five. There's Gog throwing Gurky about, and Inspire. Inspire puts an epic die in the pool. Gog is the strongest, and oh, I've realised my player aid's got all of these on, even if we haven't encountered them yet. So the other thing we saw Deirdre get is an overcharge token. You can spend this as if it were a charge on any of your charge abilities, and Gog gets a hitback token. When you are attacked, you can discard this to avert harm and have the attacker take two damage. So one cooldown reaction. Trigger this when one or more foes that you grab, place, or push end the force movement adjacent to a map edge or impassable map space. Each of those foes takes two damage. And finally, Zot loses his wizard fire, which we've never actually seen him use because we used him in Scenario 1. I'll say that. I do love how differently everyone else plays. Zot's clearly my favourite, though. I like being a wizard. I like putting the fire about. I like having a killer rabbit companion. Who doesn't usually do what you want. So Zot can now have four wizard fire on the map instead of just two. And new abilities, flash fire. Use a shield token, five cooldown shenanigan, put a wizard fire token adjacent to you, melee attack with one die, and it stuns the target. Pookie and I have an understanding. This is another type of token, this is the reset token. Discard this to remove up to three cooldown tokens from any of your abilities. A one cooldown shenanigan, change Pookie's scheme die to the face of your choice. So a bit more control over Pookie there. So that is the wealth of stuff we have just unlocked. And that is the end of chapter one. The game comes with, this is an enormous box anyway, the box is the size of the map folded in half. So, so punch boards this size, all shrink wrapped together, and a new booklet for each chapter. So there are new enemies, new tokens. I'm not going to spoil anything that's in there, but still plenty of stuff in that vault. There are five chapters in the game. I think 20, 25 scenarios that are in it. So much stuff, loads and loads. We haven't seen a fraction of the things that are in here, but I'm going to stop for now. I really hope you've been enjoying these. I would love to do more of them. At the time of recording, none of them have gone up. I would really like to do at least another chapter. See what else we can get up to. Get to play Zot again. 
that oh, did play Zot when we played it away from cameras. But yeah, as I said, right at the start of episode one, I've been loving this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I don't generally get to do a lot of campaigns. I get to see like the start of them, but wouldn't it be great to go all the way through? We'll see. Maybe by the time this comes out, I've given in already and just filmed some more. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a bit of a gap some more. Maybe I'm just going to be right here next week. Maybe I'll have cut this bit out entirely. If you'd like to help me make more things though, there are links to Patreon and Kofi in the description. I would really appreciate it if you can support the channel through there. Thank you so much to Slugfest Games. They sent me this. I hope I've shown you game off well. I think it's fantastic. There's tons more going on the channel though. You can subscribe and see all that stuff coming up. Let me know what you think of Tales from the Red Dragon in so far. Or if you've got it, where are you in your campaign? No spoilers, mind, but how are you liking it later on? Have you finished the entire thing? Thank you so much for watching though, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye everyone. <laughs>